This gentleman is a young man who was very nearsighted who wanted LASIK surgery, but due to his preoperative black cornea, he decided to do a bioptics approach. But this is how we um, do the I use the ICL, and we've actually created flaps on this gentleman to start. So I'll just show you the ICL part. We backfill the cartridge made by Star with OcuCoat. The instructional videos from Star say also use a little BSS so we kind of dilute the OcuCoat just a little bit. Then we take the foam tip plunger insert it into the star injector system. We make sure that the little foam tip applicator engages with the internal cartridge within the shooter. And then we just soak that into BSS. Here's the star ICL. I use a smooth non-tooth forceps to just kind of grab it. I shake it toward the front of the bottle and then I just grab one edge with a smooth 0.12 tying forceps. I then just place one edge into the channel of the insertion cartridge and then I grasp the other edge in a longitudinal, longitudinal manner and place it underneath the lip of the tunnel. I make sure I can see the two circles lined up on the top hill of the folded ICL. Then I take the ICL grasping forceps. I believe these are made by MSD Microsurgical. And I grasp the ICL just in front of one of the circles in the plate. And then as I pull on my forcep, I pull the opposite direction with the cartridge. So my right hand is pulling right, my left hand is pulling left, but I'm getting an equal traction. It is possible to actually tear this lens during this maneuver, and I've, I've done that before. I've had to exchange it for another lens. Now I've got my hydrated foam tip soaked in balanced salt solution. I kind of crimp the leading edge of this cartridge, push it back until it goes into that lock and key position and I rotate it into the notch. And then I just set it aside and soak it in BSS. Here we've got our eye. I've already made an interlace flap. I did not lift the flap. You'll see on the 3 o'clock position some bubbles from the uh, interlace flap. This patient it has a lot of astigmatism at axis 90 degrees with the rule of astigmatism. So I didn't feel comfortable making an incision at the 180 degree axis mark. I didn't want to induce more astigmatism. So I elected to go ahead and insert the lens at 90 degrees, hoping to reduce the amount of astigmatism just by my incision placement. So this is topical anesthetic. The patient's on 10 milligrams Valium. I make three entries into the eye. The first two, I'm really careful because there's no occupant in the eye. This is a phagic gentleman with a clear lens. I just make sure I insert my sapphire instrument parallel to the iris plane so there's no risk of bumping the anterior lens capsule. Then I'm going to go ahead and moisten the cornea with OcuCoat. OcuCoat is the recommended viscoelastic for use and insertion of the star uh, of Visi and ICL. We're supposed to inflate the anterior chamber, but be able to see the change of viscoelastic, not to overfill it so the change disappear. Now that I have two paracentesis ports, I like to make I like to make one extra one just in case I need it to be able to access and maneuver the lens once I have it in. My plan is to just insert the lens, 
vertically at 12 and 6 o'clock and then rotate it so it's aligned at 3 and 9 o'clock along the horizontal white to white. I use a 2.8 millimeter atomic blade made by BD Instruments. I'm providing a little counter traction with my 0 0.2, 0 0.12 smooth tying forceps, which prevents egress of Oxycoat because it's uh, it's kind of tapered. Now I just grasp my ICL, which is a new ins insertion cartridge. Unlike most IOL injection systems, the ICL injector doesn't really go all the way in the eye. It's really just wedged into the incision and doesn't penetrate the eye. Just for safety, I give it a little extra occupant. The trick is, as I begin to inject the ICL, I want to see the s top circle at the leading haptic. Once I see the top circle, I know the lens is upright. I have control of the ICL until it's about three quarters in the eye. So if I were to inadvertently place it upside down, I could still maneuver it at this point. But from what I can see, the alignment mark is in the right position, confirming that the lens is upright and not upside down. And then we just gently continue to insert it and watch the foot plates unfold. Here goes the right foot plate and in a moment the left foot plate. There goes the left. And so we're home free. In this instance, I want to keep the ICL anterior to the iris plane because I know I'm going to rotate this lens. The lens is not designed to be left in the eye at the 12 and, and 6 o'clock position. It's designed to be at 3 and 9 o'clock, and I know that. If I were to insert it temporarily, I'd try to insert the leading foot plates underneath the iris plane. So now I've got the lens in the eye entirely. I just take out the cartridge. And now we use a little dusted titanium instrument that has a little wide foot plate. And it grips the lens. And we just kind of rotate it anterior along the iris because the whole lens is now into the anterior to the iris, I'm just going to rotate this lens to the 3 and 9 o'clock position. And I'm not really traumatizing the lens at all because we're floating the lens over the occupant and the contact points right now are the foot plates on the anterior iris surface. see the interlace flap there. I make it about an 8.5 millimeter interlace flap. I set it for 100 micron. And in about three weeks, I'll go back and I'll relift that flap. Or I'll lift it for the first time. I won't have to. I, didn't, I didn't, did not lift it today. I created it about five minutes before we brought it back to the OR. So there I've just tucked two of the four foot plates underneath the iris, and I'm going to go for the other two on the right side.
for that proximal foot plate, I was having a little difficulty, so I just said, eh, let's make it easy. So I put in a little bit more Occucoat to kind of flatten the lens down to give myself a little more space between the ICL and the cornea. I tried never to put an instrument onto the optical area, which tends to be thinner than the foot plates and the haptics. So this instrument grabs the foot plate, allows me to maneuver it, and then tuck it underneath the iris. So that's number three. And then my final little distal foot plate, I grab it and move it and then tuck it under. So now we're pretty much home free. All we need to do now is it's still BSS to wash out the Occucoat and we'll usually put some myostat into the eye to constrict the pupil. My lens is at 3 and 9 o'clock as you can see where the positioning holes are. So here we're we just cleaned away some of the heme And we're injecting a little myocol into the anterior chamber. The usual treatment time is about 15 to 20 minutes for loading the lens and inserting it. I think this case took a little longer because I had to rotate the lens from a vertical to a horizontal position. So at this point, everything's looking pretty good. Pupils come down nicely. The lens is in good position. We're just making sure the IOP is physiologic. And we'll come back in two days and do his other eye. And then about three weeks later, uh, we, will relift, we will lift this flap, do a myopic astigmatism treatment with the Vizix laser. And he should do well. I'm careful to make sure I leave them a little myopic with astigmatism because if I left him, uh, mixed astigmatism or hyperopic astigmatism, the results of the eczema ablation would not be quite as accurate. So that's it, looking good. Double checking to make sure everything's watertight. Thank you for your time and attention. Have a good day.